in the heart of Bondi Junction, seven Staffordshire Terrier pups are causing havoc at their home in a fancy dress store. Oh, you rats. Renegade will be the first to leave home. It is sad. I'm still trying to uh, fight the fact that I'm going to maybe keep the other six. I think I'll be sad if any of them leave Bondi. But before Renegade can go to his new home, Nerida is taking the whole family to the Bondi clinic for their vaccinations. Oh. <sighs> and the psilocyte. Chris has just returned from the reptile park and is back in his comfort zone. Mona doesn't do a lot, does he? The team includes Mona. 3.64 kilos. Spanky. Do you want to tell me how you got the name Spanky? Buckwheat. Six. Alfalfa. Seven. Eight. And Miss Lilu. At six weeks of age, they're just so fragile. Their immune systems are really underdeveloped. So the fact is, vaccinations are a must. And they've got to be on time. Sure, give them all the love and attention you want, but just don't forget their shots. <laughs> Thanks. How's that for a reaction? <laughs> oh. So I'm pleased to say the entire gang is fit and healthy, but I've got one concern, Nerida. She's going to go through some serious heartbreak when she has to say goodbye to these puppies. Got a beautiful family, Nerida. Come on, guys. Very heavy. Do I have my own personal puppy carrier now? <laughs> We've had some pretty unusual orphans land on the front doorstep of the clinic. But I've got to say this latest one, she's something special. The Bondi Clinic has been a foster home for everything from possums to birds, even joeys. But in a few short days, Pan the baby goat has really settled in. Not exactly a help around the clinic, you wouldn't say. Pen has a chew first, ask questions later approach to most things in life. Oh, we love having Pen here. The vet nurses have all fallen so in love with Pen. <laughs> but there's a very special attachment between Liesl and her. Never lets her out of her sight. If you ask me, Pen thinks Liesl's a mum. She just kind of puts a smile on your face when you see her. When you hear her, you walk past in a bad mood and you hear her and you say, man, oh, someone loves me. As much as we do love having Pan around here, the reality is a vet clinic isn't the ideal home. She's eating anything and everything, so we've got to find a place for her in Bondi. That's not going to be easy. They've got to understand her needs. After feeding Frank, Chris is on the road to answer an SOS call from Linda. So he just hassles her and just... Yes. When he's not in his little chastity cage, he, he's... Yes, yes, he jumps there. on her a lot. Um, he tries to make babies. Do you want me to get him out? I wouldn't mind seeing it. Bunny's fallen in love with his Flemish giant flatmate. He just won't leave five-year-old Archelina alone. <laughs> so, Chris, you can um, see the problems we're having. Really, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty subtle gesture that Bunny... <laughs> Naughty Bunny. Naughty boy. Naughty. The thing about rabbits is they grow up very fast. They're sexually mature from eight weeks of age. He's four months of age, so he's almost in his prime. But Chris, you must know yourself how awful it is when you get un unwanted Spl attention from the opposite sex. I so know, it's it horrible, isn't it? I wouldn't know what you're talking about. I've never had unwanted attention of, of that variety. <laughs> that's, what you, that's what you mean. Poor Archie, look. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> And it gets very tiresome oh. for Archie. <laughs> oh dear, Bunny, stop it. So we need to castrate him. OK, wow. And he, yeah. But he's a bit small, isn't he? No, they're, I, they're there. They're there, they're there. Oh, they're That's there. good. OK. Yeah. Oop, he doesn't like that. So the only real solution here is the snip. Get rid of those hormones altogether and hopefully Bunny will start behaving himself. But that's no guarantee. You see, this could be dominance-related rather than hormone-related. If that's the case, and Bunny needs a new address. <laughs> Bunny, put it away. <laughs> a worried young couple have just made a mercy dash to the Bondi clinic. Her mother had been hit by a car on the side of the road and we could see Heidi kicking around inside, so got her out of the pouch and brought her home. I guess I've just been worried since yesterday when she started having the runs. Stressing quite a bit last night. I know. <laughs> we hardly slept rough all night on the internet looking at every possible <laughs> disease they can get. So it's a greeny-brown diarrhoea that she's having? Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, there you go. There's a good sample. How lovely. <laughs> it's quite mucusy, actually. Mm. Diarrhea seems like a pretty nondescript thing to have in a sick animal, but in a young animal like this, it dehydrates them very quickly, it takes away their electrolytes, and it can kill them very quickly. Alert and active, the wallaroo looks to be in good condition. Twist the head around and watches what I'm doing. See that? Do you mind? I'm trying to work down here. But appearances can be dangerously deceptive. So everything's a little bit upset, a little bit angry down there. I've been limping. Mm -hmm. Adam has been waiting for Chris to examine Billy's back leg. The worried owner explains his little mate's golf ball fetish. That's unbelievable. Oh, he could, he could chase it for an hour or more. Yeah? Yeah. Doesn't always bring it back. I wouldn't mind getting him in the corridor out there and see him actually chase this ball. I want to see how that leg performs. Then I want to see if he actually limps as a result of that, because the thrill of the chase often overrides any pain. He loves it, doesn't he? It really does. If he's still limping through that, then it's a pretty serious injury he's got there. Right. X-rays quickly reveal how much trouble Billy's in. His hip joint has disintegrated. I know he's young. Mm -hmm. I know he's, he's managing OK, but what I'm recommending is, is something fairly drastic. Got surgery? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what we need to do is actually go in there and remove this area, remove this bone. And what happens there? There's nothing there. He can actually function without a hip joint. Bring really? it or not. Mm. He'll still walk on four legs. He'll actually walk better than he is now. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. What I'm proposing here is it's a decent operation. It's a big operation. It's going to hurt, but unfortunately, we, we don't really have another option. Oh, has to be done, has to be done. Oh, I can't leave him in pain like this. It's hard to sort of describe. I mean, maybe in some ways I've got a bit more admiration or respect for him of just being able to get through all this without really showing any discomfort or problems, not wanting to be a burden on me. It's pretty amazing. It's a young dog with, with it's quite a chance there that he, he'd come out second best. It's 1.07 kilos. The zoo is coming to pick him up tomorrow, but in the meantime, we need to find a nice little spot to get his strength back. We're absolutely shockers out the back. There's so many dogs and cats out there that are just gonna add to his stress. So I've organised some alternative accommodation. We're around 60% capacity in terms of the area of his lung that was actually working. Remember this? Yeah. yeah. Now he's nudging around 90% I'd say, just listening to his chest. The lungs sound clear, there's none of those awful crackles that we had last night. I've decided he doesn't. Chris and Sarah are trying to tempt the miserable Moggy with some chicken. It's hot chicken too, let's, let's not underestimate yeah. the effort that we've gone to here. <laughs> it's the real deal, man. It's... He's understandably yeah, suspicious of, of the entire human race. You ever heard of anything like this before? No, no, nothing like this. It's quite horrifying, actually. It's, you know, it's going to take time, and you can see why. Mm. You poor thing. You're so pretty. Yeah, he's a nice oh, cat. Beautiful face. Big fat face. Yeah. Yeah. Me? Oh, my baby boy. That's <laughs> my baby boy. <laughs> he just loves you, look at him. That means you're a real good boy, yes, yes, yes. Look at him, he's laughing. Yes, he's yes. laughing. Oh, God, he's in. Oh, look, you're a gem. No worries. Thank you for everything. It's nice to see someone caring about their pets as much as you do. He's my life. <laughs> it's so important to me. The wounds are healing fast, and a grateful Rita will soon be able to take her terrier home. They've done a fabulous job. They have saved my dog. Uh, just in time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ecstatic. The foal's healthy, mum's healthy. The baby's not named yet, so that'll be the next thing, I guess, that we have to do. She's a pro, isn't she, old Harry? Yeah, she is. Just having the vets right there when the action's happening uh, takes the worry off my mind and places it on theirs, I guess. That one there and this one over here. The next crucial test is for the foal to stand up. She should be taking her first steps within 15 minutes. I'm really happy with how our filly looks, but... The problem is Harriet right now is dripping colostrum out of her udder. She only has a certain amount of that, and it's so rich with antibodies and the proteins and the fats that our little girl needs here. If she doesn't stand up quickly, all that's basically going to run into the ground and be wasted, and she's going to miss out on the most crucial thing she needs right now. So get up, come on. Oh, 
Oh, so close. Give me another go. Here we go. Hey, look at you. <laughs> hey, well done. You're up. The tricky thing is there are no road signs to direct it to, to where the milk is, but you'll watch mum, mum will nudge her. And she'll almost insti instinctively know where to go as well. But it's a slow road. A few speed humps. The tiny filly has been named Iris. Hey, oh, you spring up, do you? And once she finds her feet, she also finds the target. There you go. <laughs> Mum's pretty happy about it. I guess after all the worry in getting here and, and making sure everything was OK, to, to now see a, a stunning foal in front of me taking her steps with milk in her belly and a contented mum. What more can you ask for? Good night, Harriet. Good night, little girl. Well done, both of you. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.